Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today it's time for video number 37 on my Beginning Gardener series. It's mid-June and it is actually time to start thinking about fall planting. Now I am all about succession planting. That means I love to make sure that I have plants ready to go once I remove other plants out of the garden. And this way I get nearly four seasons worth of growth out of my garden. So I always have an, a very, very early spring crop that I plant in over winter. I have a regular spring crop that I plant in September. I have a summer crop that I just recently planted that's usually planted near, near the end of May and the beginning of June. And then I start seeds mid-June to plant out in July for my fall crops. Those are crops that I'm gonna har harvest in September. And at the same time, I look at my plots and start thinking about where I'm going to have my winter crops, the ones that I'm going to cover for the winter and grow all winter long. Now, some of those I'll harvest during the winter and some of those I'll leave for the spring. So today we're going to talk about the fall crops. Now let's get on my computer and look at my planting guide. Now I've created a map of my gardens. We're going to look at the month of July and see which plants we're going to be planting in the garden and where we're going to plant them. We're also going to look at June because that'll tell us which seeds to start. So here is my garden planner. I have one for each month. This is the month of June. And this tells me everything that is in my garden right now. So I have cauliflower that I've been harvesting in this bed and some cabbage and kohlrabi in this bed. But if we look down here at seeds to start, I need to start more cabbage, kohlrabi, cauliflower, and chijimisai. So those are the seeds we're gonna to need to start. Let's look in July and where they're going to go. So this says garlic out, cauliflower out, and onions out. So this is, these things are going to be taken out and harvested in July. What we're going to be putting in is we're going to put some cauliflower in the bed where the garlic is and where we take out the cauliflower we're going to put cabbage and kohlrabi and I put how many of each I can put in each bed because sometimes I sometimes I end up overcrowding things. So now that we know what to plant let's go plant the seeds. So here are the seeds that I want to plant. We've got cauliflower and we've got three varieties I want to do. One is called Amazing, and I've been harvesting that, and it's really delicious. And we're going to have a garden harvest video here shortly. The next one is the De Purple Hybrid. It's a gorgeous purple cauliflower. And then Clementine, which is a yellow one. Now I harvested all the yellow cauliflower so far, so far out of my garden, all the Clementine. It was really beautiful and really tasty. Next, we're going to do the Super Schmelz. This is a Super Schmelz kohlrabi. It's a giant kohlrabi. You're gonna be impressed when we go for that harvest. We're also gonna do Copenhagen Market Early Cabbage, a new one that we're gonna show you in my harvest video called Yod Fa. It's a Chinese broccoli, but it's more, it's not exactly like broccoli. We'll, we'll discuss that in my harvest video. And then we're going to plant some chiji misai. So now we're ready to plant. We're going to plant the, our seedlings in these epic six cell pots. I absolutely love these because you can plant one variety in each pot and you don't have to worry about trying, you know, like if you have a big 72 cell count tray full of pots, you don't have to worry when it's time to take the plants out. You know, if you have some that have matured faster than others to try to take the, you know, the plants out without disturbing the ones that you, you're going to leave. So I really do like just having six plants per pot and that's usually about the amount that I plant. Now the other thing that I'm doing is I'm using seed starting mix. These seeds are pretty tiny and we're going to need to use seed starting mix to plant these. It's, it's just basically finer than regular potting soil. The other thing about it is it doesn't have nutrients, so I'm going to need to start fertilizing these plants once the seedlings emerge. One last thing that we're gonna talk about is the labels. Always label your plants. You think you're going to remember what you put in each pot, but you never do, or at least I never do. So I have to label them, and I like to get them labeled first just to make sure I have enough supplies ready so I don't have to get up and down and redo everything. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna plant the cabbage. Now this is a Copenhagen market early and we're going to make holes a half inch deep. I don't know if you can see that, but each seed packet will tell you how deep to plant each seed. So we're just gonna dig little holes. Oops, that's a kohlrabi one, almost made a mistake already. We're gonna dig little holes in the cabbage tray. And 
and the seeds are really tiny. So this is what the seeds look like. They're very tiny and we're going to only put one or two in each hole. Then we're going to cover it up. And this pot is ready to go. We've got our cabbage planted. Next thing we're going to do is kohlrabi. This is the Super Schmelz kohlrabi. Absolutely giant, very tender and delicious. We're going to plant some of those. We're going to do six of each because that's what my garden plan says. And then we'll plant the rest of them. We're going to keep this video pretty short because it's pretty late at night. So I will get the rest of these planted and we'll come back after it's done. Now that we've got the seeds all planted, we're going to add some vermiculite. Now vermiculite is an expanded product. I think it's a volcanic product, it might be man-made. I can't remember, but what it does is it absorbs nutrients and water. It's a very spongy material and it has a really high absorption rate. So it holds a lot of water and nutrients and then it'll release the, it slowly. And what this helps with is it helps keep those tiny little seeds from drying out so I don't have to water as much because it soaks up the water and releases it slowly. And then also because it's controlling the, the amount of water that's on the top of the soil, you know, keeping it evenly moist, it, for some reason, it helps avoid damping off, which is a disease that causes your seeds to die really quickly after they emerge. And it also helps avoid all the algae, you know, the green algae problems that you get when you have light on top of moist surfaces. So I really love using vermiculite. It helps solve a lot of problems. So we'll get just a little bit of that on top of each pot. So there, we have a little bit on each pot. And then next thing we need to do is water these in. Like I said, this is seed starting mix. I started everything in a seed starting mix because it's finer than regular potting soil. And I pre-moistened it. But I do need to water the seedlings in so that they get good contact with the soil and so that they're well watered in. Now when I water new little seedlings and seeds, I love to use my pump sprayer. It gives a very fine mist. It does water quickly. I don't have to continuously use the pump motion so that you know, my hands don't tire out like you would with just a regular sprayer. And it's just very, it doesn't wash the seeds out of the soil. It's very gentle. And once they're all watered in, we're going to put on a humidity dome. Now, just like the name says, this holds in the humidity so, so the seeds sprout more easily and it also keeps them moist so we don't have to water them as much. Now let's put these under lights and we'll be ready to go. So there we have it. It's that easy. We've started our seeds, we have a plan, and we're going to be ready to plant for fall when it's time. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be sometime in July closer towards the end of July that I'm going to plant these seeds. Now I would love to hear if you do fall planting and if you do fall planting where you live, what kind of climate you have, and what you'd like to plant for the fall. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.